we are gathered in this room on this Sunday evening in our Easter season to come and praise God together, not alone in our upper rooms or hiding alone in our closets, but together as a community. And part of how we do that together, part of what joins us together, is being able to sing together. The music that we gather on a choral even song fills our hearts and minds with the knowledge and love of God. At least I assume that's why we're all gathered here this evening. It's also a special evening gathered because we are making special note this evening of the 100th anniversary of the death of Sir Charles Villiers Stanford. This composer, this British-Irish composer who crafted some of the amazing songs we've heard this evening, our introit that we heard together, the Magnificat, the Nunc Dimittis, and other pieces, I hope filled us all with a sense of the Spirit at work. You can feel the power of God in our midst. But Stanford was not, of course, just a composer. He was also known to be a great teacher of others. He went on, in addition to being one of the founding professors of the Royal College of Music, taught some pupils, um, including the likes of Gustav Holst, Charles Wood, Rafe von Williams, Samuel Coleridge Taylor, Herbert Howells, John Ireland, even helping a young Edward Elgar get his start as a new young person in the world. And for many gathered outside of our church walls, I, I would dare say that a lot of those names, Holst, Von Williams, Howells, probably come more readily to mind than Stanford does even. Even for those of us gathered in this room who have a deep appreciation for his impact on Anglican church music, I bet there's few of us here could, who could name one of his nine operas he composed. Um, Stanford Society members not included. I'm sure you're cheating. But, but what Stanford offered in his gift was to take to take what God had given him and to not keep it for himself, but to be willing to share it, even if it meant that, that the young people who would come after him might even stand upon his shoulders and become more widely known out in the world than even he did. And isn't that part of what Christ asks us to do? At our Reading from the Gospel of Mark, at the very end of Mark we heard this evening, Jesus did not approach the disciples and say, now take the gifts I have given you and keep them to yourselves, hold them precious and don't share them with anyone else. No, he told them, go out into the world. Teach others, lead others, form others to know the great love and gifts I have given you. And that is indeed something we saw Stanford do. It may very well be that while he may be better known to many as a great teacher of others than a composer himself, I'm reminded of the words from John Steinbeck who wrote, I have come to believe that a great teacher is a great artist and that there are as few there as any other great artist. Teaching might even be the greatest of the arts since the medium is the human mind and spirit. I myself, before becoming ordained a priest, was a teacher, and, and I will tell you, I, I and many other teachers I know secretly hold that one of our great desires is that the students that we teach go on to do bigger and better things than we were ever able to accomplish ourselves. And I'd like to think that Stanford, that at least in some small part, had pride and honor and looking at some of his pupils and seeing the great work that was accomplished in them and adding that to his own. And so on this day, when we look to Charles, Villiers, Stanford, and look in our own lives, let us look within at the gifts that God has given each and every one of us, 
and to think, how do we not just take those gifts, but how do we multiply them, amplify them as we go out into the world by taking those gifts and using them to teach others, to shape others, to accomplish more together than we would ever be able to do alone in this world. So taking us back to Proverbs chapter 9, I want to add the, the 11th verse onto that. Teach the wise, and they will become even wiser. Teach good people, and they will learn even more. Wisdom begins with respect for the Lord, and understanding begins with knowing the Holy One. If you live wisely, you will live a long time. Wisdom will add years to your life. I think one of the great examples we can get from Stanford was that many years were, in fact, added to his life. Here we are a hundred years later after his death, and we get to see how he lives on, continues to speak in and through and between us and in the lives of every person that he lifted up. Wisdom did add, indeed, many years to his life. And in that way, I commend his example to all of us gathered here on this evening. May we do the same. In the name of one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.